if you want to lose fat as fast as you possibly can while still looking great, getting compliments from your friends, your family, and people you don't even know, this is probably the simplest and easiest way I can think of. And you could do this in five easy steps. In today's world, there's multiple different variations out there for dieting, and it can get really confusing at times. We have the keto, we have the intermittent fasting, high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, but I'm here to tell you what actually works backed by research and what doesn't. Generally, most of the population who want to lose body fat are heavier individuals, overweight. They eat a lot of ultra processed foods, which isn't bad in moderation, but most of their diet is going to compromise with ultra processed foods like donuts, pizza, candy, cookies, sugary soda, but it's not the specific food that's making them overweight but it's something even more important that I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper in this video. First thing, every popular diet has one thing in common. It's a calorie deficit, which means in simple terms, you're eating less calories than your body expends in a day, either through calories or just expending more physical activity through stuff like biking, you're walking more, jogging, and that's whether you're consciously aware of it or unconsciously aware of it. And this is just based solely on the first laws of thermodynamics which states matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred in form. And we see this ever since 1964. This specific paper shows that individuals, both men and women, were eating roughly 2,300 calories per day. Nowadays, it's predicted all the way up to 2030 that we're gonna eat roughly 3,000 calories per day. And it's just gradually increasing year by year by year. So essentially, we're eating more calories and moving less. So let's move on to the five easy steps that we can do to help you lose body fat as easy, simple, to get you looking great in no time. First step, we're gonna do a calorie deficit. There's two easy ways that we can do this. First method, we're gonna use the Harris-Benedict equation right here. It's a free online tool. We could just plug in our height, our weight, our age, our gender. It's gonna spit out a number. That number is gonna be your basal metabolic rate. So your basal metabolic rate in simple terms is just how many calories your body needs just to do basic life-sustaining functions like breathing, keeping warm during the winter. So once you plug in these numbers, here we go, they're gonna ask you where your physical activity is. So we'll say for example that we're doing light exercise one to two times a week. So we're walking the dog, Maybe we go to the gym one time, two times a week. Maybe we're just going for a jog around the block a few times, but we're just gonna use one to two times for our physical activity level, just to keep it simple. So example, a 200 pound man, six foot, he's 32 years old. He needs about 2,700 calories just to maintain his body weight. Next, we're gonna create a calorie deficit off of that. The calorie deficit is gonna range anywhere from 10% to 25% of your calories are gonna be minus off your maintenance. It's also gonna range depend on how fast you do the diet, the length of the diet, and how sustainable it is for you. Second method is a little bit easier. So we could just take that same individual, the 200 pound male individual, he's 32 years old, multiply his body weight, 200 pounds, anywhere from 10 to 12. So you're gonna end up with 2,000 to 2,200 calories per day for that calorie deficit. This is a really good starting point. A really good popular researcher in the field, Eric Helms, he has a PhD in strength and conditioning and research fellow at Sports Institute in New Zealand. So this is just a good reference just to go off of. Step two, this is very important this step and make sure you do not skip out on any of these steps as we go along. We want to consume a fair amount of protein. And in this specific study, we show how powerful protein actually is versus a higher protein group and a lower protein group and their calorie deficit diet. So in this specific study, they examined the effects of dietary protein, a higher group versus a lower group on pre-obese and obese women. They took into account the amount of muscle preservation and their satiety. So they took 46 women between the ages of 28 and 80 years old. They followed a 12 week diet. It was a 750 calorie deficit diet they took in for both groups. The only difference is one group had most of their calories, 30% of their calories coming from protein. The other group, which was the lower protein intake group had 18% of their calories coming from protein in their diet. What was amazing was that both groups lost weight, fat mass, and lean body mass. 
but the group that had the higher protein intake lost less lean body mass. So they ended up looking particularly better when they started doing their calorie deficit diet. So it seems prevalent to keep your protein intake higher, not only for muscle preservation, but for satiety as well. So a good general recommendation for higher protein intake would be anywhere from 0.7 grams per pound of body weight, all the way up to one gram per pound of body weight. And this is both according to Eric Helms, as previously mentioned, and Mike Isretel. He has his PhD in sports physiology, and he's a professor of exercise and sports science at Temple University in Philadelphia. So if you're in that area, be aware. So essentially we wanna be in a calorie deficit, but we still wanna maintain a higher protein intake so we preserve as much muscle as we can, be satiated, and look great by the end of it. And we also avoid getting that skinny fat look that we all don't want. Step number three, we're gonna figure out our fat intake. We need fats to regulate your hormone production, so testosterone. It's gonna help you build muscle and lose fat and other health metrics as well. So not any lower than 0.3 grams per pound of body weight is usually recommended. Anything more than that, you're probably gonna end up taking away from your carbohydrates that you also need that we're gonna get into, or you might be taking away from your protein that's gonna help with your muscle preservation. But we still need some healthy fats just for hormones to function properly. So some healthy fats would include olive oil, nuts, peanuts, almonds, avocados, and all that good stuff. Step four, we're almost there. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are important because they're your body's most preferred energy source and efficient energy source when it comes to moderate to high intensity work, as well as extending the amount of time in a workout, which includes moderate endurance training. So if you endurance train, this could potentially help you as well. Long distance runners is probably one that comes off the top of my head that's a really good one. So in this specific study, we actually see the ingestion of carbohydrates prior to a workout. It can reduce markers of muscle damage throughout the first 24 hours, specifically for recovery. So whatever is left over essentially in your diet is gonna be counted for your carbohydrates. So if the 200 pound man, he's consuming 200 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat, because that's the bare minimum, what's left over is gonna be his carbohydrates. So there's four calories per one gram of protein. So he's eating 800 calories for protein. There's nine calories per one gram of fat. So he's eating 540 calories of fat and the rest is 1300. And because his calorie deficit, we'll say is 2200 calories, he has 1340 calories left. So 860 calories left over divided by four calories because that's how many calories are in one gram of carb. And what we have left over is 215 grams of carbs that could be coming from farro, brown rice, fruit, vegetables. Last step, how much should we actually be losing? 0.5 to 1% of body weight is a good recommendation each week. This is gonna allow us to spare as much muscle as possible while predominantly losing body fat. But of course, we're gonna lose water weight, we're gonna lose minerals, especially when we start the diet. But the whole point of dieting is to spare as much muscle as possible while just losing body fat. So for a 200 pound man, a good starting point would be to lose anywhere from one pound to about two pounds of body weight per week. Now, how do we measure if we're actually losing body fat or not? We're gonna use different indicators. We're never gonna just use one. Fabric tape is a very good indicator of whether we're actually losing fat or not. We're gonna take the fabric tape, we're gonna use it and measure against the same place every single time. So around our navel, either above it on it or below it just keeps using the same spot every single time we're going to do that in the morning on an empty stomach after we use the bathroom to get the most accurate reading waist circumference is a pretty good indicator whether we're actually losing fat or not next if we see physical changes in the mirror if we have more definition we're getting compliments from our friends and family and strangers you don't even know there's probably a pretty good chance that you're doing it correctly weight scale same thing applies to the fabric tape we're going to weigh ourselves in the morning on an empty stomach after we use the bathroom, before breakfast. A good starting point anywhere from three to four times a week. Your weight's always gonna fluctuate, but if you can just get an average and hit new weekly lows every week, that's what we're gonna aim for. All right, last one, performance in the gym. So generally your cardio tends to improve before anything else, especially when we're cutting body fat. But if your performance in the gym during resistance training also takes a huge hit, you might wanna reevaluate your calories, your protein, whether you're doing it too fast, too slow, your sleeping habits, your stress management levels. Just a change in variation from carbs and fats can make a huge difference. Do these steps, follow every single guideline, and you're gonna see the weight come off like butter. This is how I would do it to the T.